Hey there, Pimple Stoppers. In this video, I wanna cover some big news about iPledge. For those who are new to the channel, I'm Dr. John Barbieri. I'm a board certified dermatologist and acne expert. Now, iPledge is an FDA mandated REMS program focused on pregnancy prevention and counseling for the drug isotretinoin, also known as Accutane. This program was started in 2006 with the goal of preventing fetal exposure to isotretinoin. And that's important because isotretinoin Accutane it is a teratogen, that means it can cause birth defects. So it's very important when we're using this medication that we're very careful about preventing pregnancy. The iPledge program has some good features to it. It requires consent and counseling about risks of the drug before starting it. It requires pregnancy tests to make sure that we're not giving the medication to people who are pregnant, that we're not potentially harming a developing baby. However, this program also has been associated with some logistical burdens and barriers to care. We've seen that before and after the implementation of this program, it's decreased access to isotretinoin. It's made it harder for people who are appropriate for this medication to be able to get it. And it seems like it may particularly impact people who are of lower socioeconomic status and people who are in racial and ethnic minoritized groups. Now, due to these and other weaknesses, for years, people have been advocating for really what I would call common sense reforms to the program to maintain that goal of patient safety and counseling while at the same time improving access for safe use of this drug. Now, before I get into these reforms, I do wanna talk about how you know, isotretinoin is not a drug that's right for everyone. While it can be incredibly effective for acne, it certainly comes with some important risks as well. And we go into that in other videos on the channel. In this video, we're not gonna talk about whether isotretinoin is right for someone or not. We're gonna cover these changes to the iPledge program. Now, the first change to this program, I think is gonna be a really important change, and that is to reduce the requirement for documentation of counseling for persons who cannot become pregnant from monthly to only at enrollment. And this is a huge win for patient access because historically patients who were not capable of becoming pregnant had to be seen monthly, every month, to be able to have this documentation of counseling done in the iPledge program. And this made it very difficult to deal with things like someone going on vacation or being away for summer or being at school. It made it incredibly difficult from a logistical standpoint to use this medication in people who aren't at any risk of becoming pregnant, right? The point of this program is to prevent pregnancy and people who are at no risk of this outcome becoming pregnant were being forced to be in this very strict requirement of monthly visits. And this change is gonna potentially allow physicians and patients to be more pragmatic and a little more flexible about how follow-up is done. Certainly from a standpoint of drug safety and counseling and all of those things, patients could still be seen monthly if they and their physician think that's the best course of action. But if people are doing really well and they'd like to be seen a little bit more often, now there's that flexibility to do that, to be able to deal with people going to summer camp, to be able to deal with people having different um, scheduling constraints that might make it difficult to have monthly visits. And this is likely gonna help increase access to people who are appropriate candidates for this medication. The second big change in this announcement is to get rid of this things called the 19 day lockout period. And what this is, is when patients who are of childbearing potential start Accutane, they start isotretinone, they have to have some pregnancy tests to make sure they're not pregnant, that makes sense. And then once they have the pregnancy test, they have seven days when they do that test to be able to pick up the medication. And if they aren't able to do that in seven days, then they're no longer eligible to get it. And that also makes sense. You wanna make sure that the pregnancy test is timely to when they're starting the medication. However, what would happen is if they missed that seven day window, which was often no fault of their own, it was something like an insurance approval issue, a pharmacy stock issue, they would now be locked out for 19 days, meaning they had to wait 19 days before they could repeat a pregnancy test to be able to get the medication. And this really had extremely low biological plausibility. Why not just allow them to take another pregnancy test and then be eligible to get the drug again? And so this change to the program, this reform is gonna allow them to, if they miss that seven day window, they can just take another pregnancy test, make sure that pregnancy is included, and then they'll again be eligible to be able to start the medication. And again, this is a big change to help improve safe access to isotretinoin, right? These people who miss a window and get another pregnancy test, they're being screened more intensively. They had more pregnancy tests. We're more confident that they're not pregnant. And yet we are being less, we are being more restrictive to them being able to get the drug. And that really just doesn't make a lot of sense. So I think this is another common sense to reform to the program that's gonna be able to improve access while also maintaining safe use of isotretinoin and keeping with the goal of pregnancy prevention, avoiding fetal exposure to Accutane. 
So the next two changes have to do with how the pregnancy testing is done. Historically, the pregnancy testing for iPledge for Accutane had to be done in what's called CLIA certified lab. This was a very formal kind of process for doing pregnancy testing. During COVID, there is an exception made to allow for the use of home pregnancy testing. And this was a big deal because now patients could potentially be taken care of using telemedicine, which can really help, again, address some of these logistical burdens of the program. They could do a home pregnancy test, they could submit it with their name and date to make sure the test isn't being falsified, and then that could be used to confirm that they're not pregnant for the iPledge program. Now, with the ending of the COVID public health exemption, this pregnancy test uh, change was going to expire. And what this notification does, and it confirms an earlier notice from the FDA, is that home pregnancy testing will continue to be allowed for patients who are on isotretinoin on Accutane, with the exception of the first two tests before starting. So the test when people are enrolled and the test right before they start after what's called the 30-day waiting period, those still need to be done in a medical setting, whether that's an office or a lab. But subsequent pregnancy testing, once the patient has started isotretinoin, now can be done with home pregnancy tests. So again, I think this is a common sense reform that can help improve access while still maintaining those safe use requirements of having monthly pregnancy tests. And then finally, the pregnancy test requirement, which used to require a CLIA certified lab, has now been changed to in a medical setting, which is an office or a lab. And this allows, I think, some increased flexibility for practices to be able to conduct pregnancy testing using dipstick pregnancy tests or other forms of pregnancy testing, even if they're not a formal CLIA certified lab. And again, I think this helps improve access. Now, when a patient comes in for a visit for isotrinone, they could potentially just do their pregnancy test in the doctor's office, not have to potentially go to a separate uh, building or a separate lab to get that test done. And again, I think this just improves the patient experience without adversely impacting safe use of isotrinone. So I'm really excited for these changes that are coming. I think this is great that the FDA and the FDA advisory panel listen to key stakeholders about some of the limitations with the iPledge program and listen to some of these common sense reforms to improve the program while still maintaining safe access and safe use of isotrinone to prevent potential side effects, to prevent fetal exposure. Now, the FDA has given the isotrinone products manufacturers group, which is the group that actually implements the program. It's not the FDA that runs this program. It's actually run by the isotrinone manufacturers. So the FDA has given them six months to reply about how they're going to make these changes and actually put them into practice. And I hope that they're gonna work with key stakeholders like doctors, like pharmacists and patients to make sure that these are implemented in a way that makes sense, in a way that works, and that allows for improved access to this drug that can be incredibly valuable in the treatment of acne while still maintaining safe use of this medication that does have some important risks. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have, please pop that like button and consider subscribing to the channel for more acne and rosacea content. In addition, ask me your questions about eye or acne in the comments below. Until next time, see ya.